Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ve salatu ve selamü Resulillah. Ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve man wala. Today is the class, the hadith class. We had completed discussion of the multiple hadith that confirmed the fact that the good deeds a disbeliever had performed before embracing Islam are counted for him or for her once they embrace Islam and remain as Muslims till the day they die. We talked about Hakim ibn Hizam and the, and the things he used to do before Islam and continue to do after Islam. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be upon him, said that uh, you build more good deeds now that you're a Muslim on the previous good deeds before your Islam. The next part, <clears throat> the next uh, subtitle is Babu Sidq al-Imani wa Ikhlasi. Babu Sidq al-Iman wa Ikhlasi. We are still, this is all in the book of Iman from the very, very beginning. This whole volume so far, talking about the book of Iman, meaning the belief. So, <clears throat> so he, he collected in that book everything that pertains to the belief, the Iman. Here's another hadith on this matter. Don't recall the number, maybe it's number 226. Um, this chapter talks about sincerity and truthfulness in Iman. Um, narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, the famous companion of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, لَمَّا نَزَلَتْ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِمَانَهُمْ بِظُلْمٍ شَقَّ ذَلِكَ عَلَىٰ أَصْحَابِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ وَسَلَّمْ He says when this verse was revealed, it is the verse in chapter 6, verse number 82, in which Allah says, those who believe and do not mix their belief with ظلم, injustice, uh, wrongdoing, أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمُ الْأَمْنُ وَهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ Those are the ones who will be safe. Meaning in the akhirah from any kind of punishment, wahum muhtadun, and they are they are guided, they are guided in this dunya and in the akhirah as well. They are guided to their place in paradise as well. The Sahaba were very uh, meticulous when they recited and read the verses, and they felt that this verse um, is very difficult for them. It was very difficult and stressful on them. شَقَّ ذَلِكَ عَلَىٰ أَصْحَابِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ وَقَالُوا أَيُّنَا لَا يَظْلِمُ نَفْسَهِ They said to him, Who has not wronged himself? وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِمَانَهُمْ بِظُلْمِ Because Allah gives exclusive, gives safety exclusively for those people who have sincere belief and do not mix their belief with wrongdoing. So they felt that since we all make mistakes and we all sin, then we're in trouble. Then we are not safe in the Akhirah. This is how they understood it. And it's a very straightforward understanding. They said to him, who hasn't wronged himself? وَأَيُّنَا لَا يَظْلِمُ نَفْسَ فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ لَيْسَ هُوَ كَمَا تَظُنُّونَ أَوْ لَيْسَ بِذَاكَ He says, no, you misunderstood. It is not what you understood. It is not what you think. لَيْسَ هُوَ كَمَا تَظُنُّونَ إِنَّمَا هُوَ كَمَا قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِ يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ He says, this is not what is meant here. This dhulm, this wrongdoing, does not refer to somebody just committing a sin. Because everybody can fall into a sin. He says, this, this verse is referring to the different kind of dhulm, different kind of wrongdoing, which is the wrongdoing of shirk. وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ وَهَوَ يَعِضُ When Luqman said to his son while advising him, يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ Oh my son, do not associate with Allah. إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ Because shirk is the gravest and worst wrongdoing. ظلم in Arabic means in Arabic اعتداء الاعتداء على حق صاحب الحق. This is the definition of ظلم. ظلم means to violate the right, any kind of right, of the owner of that right. 
the, in the, the, that's the general definition. So if somebody steals some, somebody's property, this property is, is the rightful property of someone else. If somebody violates that, that is dhulm. Dhulm, the shirk is considered as dhulm because Allah is the only one who has the right to be worshipped. And any violation of the right of Allah to be worshipped is a dhulm, but it's not any kind of dhulm, it is the worst kind of dhulm. Because the haq of Allah is greater, the, the, the right that Allah has on his creation is greater than any right of any one to his property. Because even the property that you own, your house or your car or whatever, you and that property were given to you by Allah Azza wa right? But when Allah is the one who created that human being, and he is the one who continues to provide for him. He is the one who continues to keep him alive and safe. So there is no place whatsoever for acceptance of any kind of association and worship with Allah. That is why in the hadith, in which Prophet uh, said, Ya Mu'adh, O Mu'adh, atadri ma haqqullahi ala al-ibad? O Mu'adh, do you know what is the right of Allah upon his servants and slaves? He says, Allah wa rasuluhu a'lam. He says, Allah and His Messenger know best. He says, حَقُّ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْعِبَادِ أَنْ يَعْبُدُوهُ وَلَا يُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا He says, Allah has a full right on all His servants, slaves, whom He's created and provided for, of course, that they worship Him alone and none but Him, and none but Him. And that's why even in the hadith, another hadith we recited before by Ibn Mas Abdullah ibn Mas'ud as well, uh, in which he, uh, he asked the Messenger of Allah, أَيُّ ذَنْبِ أَعْضَمْ what is the worst kind of sin? What is the gravest kind of sin or wrongdoing? He says, أَن تَجْعَلِ لِلَّهِ نِدًّا وَهُوَ خَلَقَكَ That if you set up a rival with Allah, while Allah is the one who created you. So it's very clear. Here uh, it is referring um, that the one who have the peace in the Akhirah uh, are those who clear their Iman from any shred of uh, of uh, association with Allah. Now, regular sins are not included here because they, not, they, they, don't, they do not constitute shirk. They do not um, reach the magnitude of being shirk, association with Allah. They are mostly due to weakness of the human being. Not that he has set up a rival with Allah, but some sins can reach the level of shirk. And that is why those sins are greater than the worst of sins, such as there's a, 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 a shirk al-azgar or shirk al-khafi, such as showing off for people so as to get their, with what is supposed to be for Allah, to get the praise of the people, such as giving sadaqah only to be called uh, generous. While this sadaqah is an act of worship, you should give it for the sake of Allah, such as praying or reciting the Quran or doing any kind of good deed that is only supposed to be for Allah Azza wa Jal, and wanting the praise of the people or doing it for the, for the, for the status amongst the people. That is, that, is, that is a form of shirk. So that in, is included in this verse. But if somebody, for instance, makes him a, a mistake here or there uh, uh, out of his weakness, uh, he, he, maybe he lied, maybe he saw something or looked at something he shouldn't be looking at, that's a mistake that he can ask Allah's forgiveness and inshallah Allah will forgive it and it will not affect his safety will not affect his safety in the Akhirah. And that's, this has to be the only tafsir for this verse. We cannot accept any other explanation because some scholars of tafsir, such as uh, Zamakhshari, he included in this verse all sins. He said any kind of sin is dhulm. Because dhulm and nafs, when we commit a regular sin or a, a small or minor sin that does not mount to shirk, the Quran itself has called it zulm. The Quran has called it zulm as well. But since the messenger said that this verse in particular does not involve those, we have to say, we have to resort to this explanation alone. Because he said that, Laysa huwa kama It is not what you are referring to. Regular sins are not in, in, included in this verse. Uh, as Zamakhshari said that because he depended on the linguistic meaning of zulm. Linguistically, any kind of sin is a form of zulm. Okay, ظلم uh, ظلم النفس. Uh, if somebody can remind me of the ayah, فقد ظلم نفسه وما يفعل ذلك فقد ظلم نفسه. It's mentioned uh, at the, the, the beginning of the verse. I don't recall. 
لا لا ومن يفعل ذلك فقد ظلم نفسه اكتب بس ظلم نفسه الايه وتظهر لك this verse uh, is talking about a regular sin and Allah called it ظلم he has wronged himself because he has put a burden of sin and accountability on himself and he may get punished for it he may get, he may get punished but he also may be forgiven and it will not affect his safety in the, on the day of judgment so that's another thing but the makhshari uh, also is uh, from the mu'tazila the mu'tazila is um, um, uh, what do you call it one of the um, schools of thought but not uh, in the, not a legal school of thought but a school of thought with regards to islamic creed and theology and they consider that whoever commits and dies insisting on a kabira on a major sin he is in the fire in hell fire forever and will never come out so they have this kind of belief but which is a wrong belief we've read multiple hadith before indicating that major sins even if somebody has not repented can be forgiven by allah uh, and of course if he repents he repents then they are forgiven exactly exactly this verse was talking about rules and regulations with regards to divorce so if somebody out of greed or something transgressed these rules allah says who goes beyond the, the boundaries that allah has set he has committed zulm and wronged himself but still we cannot include that in this ayah since the messenger وسلم, gave this kind of uh, explanation we have to restrict it to what he has advised in this verse otherwise we're all in trouble because if we include what the, the makhshari said here that any kind of sin will deprive you of being safe in the akhirah then we are all in, in deep we are all in deep uh, trouble and that is uh, why he explained it in this way another reason to explain it and this shows you that the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam has a very uh, has the best uh, and deepest uh, in-depth understanding of the quran because this verse is in the context of ibrahim alayhi salam uh, having a debate with his people who were committing shirk uh, it starts uh, it starts from the ayah with qala ibrahim li abihi azara ya ya qala ibrahim li abihi azara wa qala ibrahim li abihi azara i don't recall the verses right now but anyhow he was talking about uh, him huh ya wa qala ibrahim li abihi azara exactly at attakhidu asnaman alihatan are you associating idols with in worship with allah so he's talking about the shirk. The whole context is talking about the shirk. And then uh, they kept on arguing with him. And he kept on giving them evidence. He said, look at the moon, look at the sun, and so on. And then uh, he says, uh, when they started continue to argue, he said, How can you argue? Uh, give, me, give me this baseless argument. And Allah has already guided me to the truth. And I, will, I do not fear the gods that you are scaring me with. Except if Allah wills to harm me in any way, then that harm will happen. Uh, and how should I, why should I fear what you associate, ashraktum again, with Allah? And you do not fear the fact that you've associated with Allah. And gods that have no evidence and no justification for their worship. He says, which of the two teams, the believers or the non-believers, are more worthy of being safe and peaceful in the Akhirah only if you knew? And then this statement, scholars say, it is either the statement of Ibrahim giving the answer or Allah giving the answer. Only those who believe and do not mix their belief with zulm means dhulm al the, the great dhulm, the great wrongdoing, which is shirk, those are the ones who will be safe in the akhirah, and those are the ones who are guided. Stop here, inshallah. No? Khalas mar again, inshallah. There was an important hadith, we'll leave it till next time. Inshallah. This highlights the importance of having context of tafsir. Absolutely. Because a lot of times we read the ayah out of this context, you have the totally wrong meaning. Absolutely. So this is a very important for tafsir, that Rasulullah uses the incident as a as an indication how to make the scene. Absolutely. If you look at the context of it's all about shirk, 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 shirk. Absolutely. And then the statement came. And uh, so the Sahaba in general misunderstood it 
And the Messenger وسلم, clarified it to them right away. And because of this context, and also linguistically even, the, the al-Nakira, في مقام العموم تفيد التعظيم there's a linguistic principle that says that when you say نكره ظلم it's not defined it is not defined and it's in general like this it could mean تعظيم بمعنى لم يلبسوا ايمانهم بظلم عظيم it means uh, this when you say ظلم means a great ظلم the way it's worded implies that he's not referring to any ظلم but to the gravest of ظلم you follow? Yeah.